Hey folks, it's Speedy Stevie video time again. Here's a great video from Alfa Romeo all about their museum, with its priceless cars, and much more. Please watch this video right to the end, and subscribe, it would be greatly appreciated and if you click the bell you'll get to know as soon as new videos are published, almost daily. The last section of a museum is speed. It is a place in which the atmosphere, the noise of the races penetrate into the museum. The sections display the victories, the heroes behind the wheel, the legendary challenges, but also the sportness, performance and driving pleasure. It is a place in which all the cars are red, alpha red. A legend is born tells the story of the great feats of this brand until the Second World War, an adventure that began with the victory of Ugo Sivocci's RL at the Targa Florio in 1923, and which saw the debut of the symbol of the four-leaf clover. In 1925, the GP Tipo P2 won the first World Championship for Grand Prix vehicles, it was a revolutionary car, which launched the era of Vittorio Iano. Two liters, eight cylinder, and for the first time, a volumetric compressor. A technology that would make Alfa Romeo great in the 30s. The legendary P3 that saw Nuvolari star in his biggest endeavors. Then the AC 2900B, Speciale Le Mans, one of the museum's masterpieces. The Tipo C, that prevailed at the Vanderbilt Cup in 1936 and the 512, up to the two impossible two engines monopostals. Before he became the Drake, Enzo Ferrari debuted as an Alfa Romeo driver in 1920. In 1929, he founded the Scuderia Ferrari, that soon became the Alfa Romeo's official racing department. That period brought Alfa many victories, but also extraordinary cars, which displayed the Alfa Romeo emblem on the bonnet and the prancing horse of Ferrari on the side. There were also outstanding vehicles, like the Bimotore, two engines, one engine in the front and one in the rear, for an overall power of 540 horsepower and a speed record that Tazio Nuvolari set on the Firenze Mare Highway at over 350 km per hour. After the war, the world was reborn, and while Alfa Romeo was designing its features, the Alfetas, which had been hiding to escape the bombings, came back to the tracks. Designed in 1938, the 158 has a 1.5 liter inline 8 cylinder engine with volumetric compressor. In the beginning, it had 185 horsepower, but when the first F1 World Championship started in 1950, it has already reached 350 horsepower. Then came 11 victories on 11 races, and Nino Farina, in 1950, became the first F1 World Champion. In 1951, the car was so deeply evolved that it was renamed 159. The horsepower had soared to 450 for a maximum speed of 306 km per hour. It was an intense championship, all the way to the last race, the Spanish Grand Prix, when Fangio won the World Championship with a victory that would go down in history. In the 60s, Alfa Romeo returned to the races with Carlo Kitty's Auto Delta, and the Tipo 33s returned to the Sport Championship. Created in 1967 with 2 liters engines, they soon rose to 3 liters, and in 1975 and 1977 they won two World Championships for Sport vehicles. But the true masterpiece of the project is the 33 Stradale which, as its name indicates, was a car conceived for the road use. Production was planned for 50 units, but it stopped at only 18 chassis, 12 of which have this streamlined body designed by Franco Scaglione, which immediately made this car one of the immortal and timeless icons of Alfa Romeo. It is a time in which different categories, cars, championships succeed each other. From the sports cars of the 50s, like the 6C 3000 CM to those of the 60s, like the Giulia TZ2, and then the epic of the Giulia GTA and GTM, 
which in the 60s and 70s had no rivals in Super Tourism Championship. The dream of returning to Formula 1 came true in the 70s, when Alfa Romeo, first by providing its engines to the Team Brabham, and then by participating with a complete Alfa Romeo vehicle, finally returned to the top league. The cars preserved in these halls are alive and functioning. A mechanical workshop maintains them regularly, and a small internal track allows them to stretch their legs every once in a while and drive a few laps to remain strong and alive. That's it for another Speedy Stevie video. Subscribe now.